Gaming Bolt presents 15 games that have the lowest ratings on Metacritic. The importance of video game reviews, or how much fans should rely on them before deciding whether or not to make their purchase, is something that is often talked about. Just how much value should be placed in scores before deciding whether you want to play a game is, of course, debatable. What isn't debatable is the fact that these scores are indeed important factors. Metacritic ratings of games are usually a pretty good indicator of their quality, and it's often fun to peruse their listings to look back on how appropriately a game's quality is reflected in its aggregated score. In this feature, we're going to take a look at 15 of the lowest rated games on Metacritic, in descending order. Without further ado, let's begin. Charlie's Angels, Metascore 23. Charlie's Angels wasn't a very good film to begin with, and then Nico Entertainment and Ubisoft went ahead and made a video game adaptation. Sure, that was a time when making licensed film to video game adaptations were an obligation for a lot of the biggest publishers, but that doesn't excuse just how horrible this game is. Its GameCube version has a score of 23 on Metacritic after 21 reviews. Rambo the Video Game, Metascore 23. Another example that illustrates that video games based on films are rarely ever good ideas. Not that we don't have enough of those. Major issues such as inadequate AI, an extremely short campaign, over-reliance on QTEs, restrictive gameplay, horribly outdated visuals, and stilted writing made it a pretty bad game all around. That's why its PS3 version has a Metacritic score of 23. Fast and Furious Showdown, Metascore 22. Fast and Furious Showdown isn't exactly a direct film-to-game adaptation, instead serving as a bridge between the events of the fifth and sixth films. It's still an example of using a popular license in the worst way possible. The game was universally panned by critics, and though its 3DS version has a relatively more respectable score of 50, its Xbox 360 version holds a Metacritic aggregate of 22. Drake of the 99 Dragons, Metascore 22. Drake of the 99 Dragons is a pretty bad game. We'll tell you just how bad. Statistically, it's the second worst game that has ever existed on the original Xbox going by Metascore. The game was riddled with countless game-breaking issues and baffling design choices such as its bizarre control scheme for each individual weapon while dual wielding. Meanwhile, camera issues and a number of technical flaws and heavily outdated visuals did the game no favors either. Afro Samurai 2 Revenge of the Kuma Metascore 21. Afro Samurai 2 was perhaps the worst game of 2015. It was, in fact, so bad that the developers pulled it from both Steam and PSN the very year it was released, thanks to overwhelmingly negative receptions, while those who purchased the game were also given refunds. The developers were also forced to cancel plans for what was originally going to be a trilogy, since, in his own words, the game didn't sell like hotcakes. Infestation Survivor Stories the War Z, Metascore 20. Infestation Survivor Stories is perhaps to date one of the worst offenders when it comes to microtransactions and unethical developer practices. The game itself was surprisingly poor in design and quality, with ideas that were either unoriginal or just plain broken. What made it worse was the fact that it was brimming with microtransactions, coaxing users to spend more money at almost every possible step. Surprisingly enough, despite all of these major issues and the fact that the game was universally panned, the game has still managed to sell 2.8 million units since its launch in 2012. Alone in the Dark Illumination Metascore 19 Afro Samurai 2 may very well be among the worst games of 2015, but Alone in the Dark Illumination is perhaps one of only a few games that can even beat that. The game received overwhelmingly negative reviews from almost everyone who played it, and essentially not one single person had anything nice to say about it. Its Metacritic score of 19 is an adequate representation of the final product's quality. Spogs Racing Metascore 18 Spogs Racing belongs in that dreaded, overpopulated category that we all know so well. We Shovelware. It was a game that was fundamentally broken on almost every single level, from its frustratingly incompetent AI to its unbelievably ugly visuals. Spog's Racing was called by a lot of critics one of the worst games to have ever been created, and you don't need us to tell you that that's a major criticism. Double Dragon 2 Wander of the Dragons Metascore 17 Double Dragon 2 Wander of the Dragons is, according to Metacritic's aggregate scores, the worst Xbox 360 game of all time. 
It was an uninspired beat-em-up that received all sorts of colorful criticism. Metro Game Central called it the interactive equivalent of irritable bowel syndrome. Magazine Game Master UK said it was more broken than Back Mountain, while Hardcore Gamer likened it to Rebecca Black's song Friday. Vroom in the Night Sky, Metascore 17. If you've been following our features in the past, you'll notice that this isn't the first time we've mentioned Vroom in the Night Sky. Not only have we questioned the thought that went into its ridiculous name, we've also called it one of the worst games of 2017, a year that has otherwise been an absolute gem. Vroom in the Night Sky currently holds a Metacritic score of 17, though it can be argued that even that might be a bit generous. Leisure Suit Larry, Box Office Bust, Metascore 17. Leisure Suit Larry, if you know of it, is a franchise that consistently pumps out games that are mediocre at best, so it's not a surprise that Box Office Bust is among the worst games to have ever been created, at least per its Metacritic score. The game was bogged down by mindless and repetitive gameplay, while other issues such as a general lack of ambition and a horrible sense of humor did it no favors. Yaris, Metascore 17. You want to know how bad this Toyota licensed racing game was? Yaris was free, and it took all but a few seconds to download, and yet, reviewers still could not find it in themselves to recommend this game to anyone. Every aspect of Yaris was criticized, from its visuals and its controls to its busted online play. Ride to Hell Retribution, Metascore 13. It's hard for a game to be so bad that it's actually an offensive waste of time to anyone who spends even one second on it. But that's just how bad Ride to Hell Retribution was. Featuring poor controls, ugly graphics, stilted dialogue, horrible voice acting, excessively linear gameplay, and a devilishly negative portrayal of female characters, Ride to Hell Retribution was truly a game that worked on absolutely no level whatsoever. Family Party 30 Great Games Obstacle Arcade Metascore 11 Other than having a ridiculously long and unwieldy name, Family Party, let's just call it Family Party, yeah? Had a lot of other significant issues. Surprisingly irritating voice acting, boring minigames that felt more like chores, and frustrating controls were only a few of the major, major issues that characterize this... I mean, we're not sure if game is the right word here? Big Rigs Over the Road Racing, Metascore 8. And here it is, the worst video game that has ever existed, according to Metacritic scores. Big Rigs, Over the Road Racing, and its laughably bad quality are well documented by now. Being a broken, mind-numbingly boring, and bug-riddled game isn't the only legacy it has left behind, though. Big Rigs, Over the Road Racing has also given birth to the Your Winner meme, and for that at least, we will always be grateful. And that'll be about it for this one. If you guys like what we're doing at Gaming Bolt, please consider subscribing to our channel, and I'll see you guys on the next video.